Come on, praise him. Praise him. <laughs> What a wonderful thing to be free from sin and have Christ within flowing through this vessel. Paul said we should present this body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It's your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the Renewing of your mind that you'll prove that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Come on, somebody. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming and sharing in the worship. I just had to go as the Lord would have it to be. Praise God. And I believe the more we submit to what God wants to do, the greater results we see. Praise God. For it is always good to obey the Lord and to follow his leadership of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. I say, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. He's still working miracles, still doing wonders. Hallelujah. Every day he's working. Hallelujah. And if we believe and walk in faith with him, his works will be done in us and through us. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants. He says we are living stones. We are what? Living stones fit together to house the habitation of the Lord. We are that walking tabernacle of the Lord in the earth. Hallelujah. Because he wants to make his dwelling in us. Huh? Praise God. And he's not just dwelling in us. Just to say dwell in us. But that the life in him be revealed in us. Come on now. Hallelujah. It was in 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2 verse 4 to 6 says coming to him coming to him who to christ as to a living stone hallelujah rejected indeed by men men rejected him but chosen by god and precious chosen by god and precious he says you also as living stones are being what built up a spiritual house a spiritual what house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through who through jesus christ therefore it is also contained in the scripture behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. He who believes on him will what? By no means be put to shame. Huh? We serve a miracle working God. And he's working wonders and miracles every day. Why not for you? All it takes is a little faith. And faith requires obedience. And when we believe in him and obey him, we step into the promise and see the fulfillment of the promise manifest in our lives. Amen. So he said he made us to be his habitation. To be his what? His habitation. Built us up into a spiritual house. A spiritual what? house god as the house on the land hallelujah and it says we the people of god are that house huh a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ amen hallelujah so he's living in us god said that he will make 
is dwelling in us he says i'll i'll be your you'll be my people and i'll be your god huh what he says he can dwell in us in sin sin has to be removed we have to disengage from sin to have true fellowship with god we have to what disengage from sin and from those who practice sin to have true fellowship with God. Second Corinthians 6, reading from verse 16, says, What agreement has the temple of God? The what? The temple of God. Who is the temple of God? He says, You are the temple of God. And he says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And he says, as God has said, I will dwell in them. In them who? In his people. In his temple. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Therefore, what did he say? He just be our God and we can be as we be because he's just our God. No, he says, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. That's how he said I'll receive you. He's not receiving you in sin. You need to understand that some preachers preach it that way, but that ain't the word. He says, come out from amongst them and be separate. Says who? Says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. And, and I will receive it. That's where the receiving comes in. And he says, and I will be a father to you. I will be a what? I will be a father to you. And you shall be. You see this? Shall, shall be my sons and daughters it's on the basis of your following the instruction that you get the result you cannot ignore the instruction and say i claim it is my father and he's my god and i'm his child and i'm his people it didn't work like that he has some terms for you to be one with him he's not becoming one with sin uh-uh never so he says then, what, temp, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are, you are what? The temple of the living God. Praise God. Huh? And he said, as God has said, as what? As God has said, he said, I will dwell in them and walk among them i will be their god and they shall be my people and that's when he says therefore since he says i will dwell in them and i will walk among them and they shall be my people they shall be he didn't say they are he says they shall be my people then he says therefore this is the therefore come out from among them and be separate says the lord do not touch what is unclean what is that unclean sin that's not talking about dirt and mess. that's talking about sin and he says and i will receive you that's how he says he'll receive you and i will be you said it will be i will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and that it'll say you are he said you shall it's on the basis of you following those instructions you'll get that result hello and someone to claim it whether or not they say don't care what that preacher say i know i'm a child of god living in sin the devil is a liar hello the devil is the father of all those living in sin all those living in sin, the devil is their father. Oh, you don't like the sound of that? Well, it's true. Hallelujah. He said in 1 John 3, 
First John 3, hallelujah, from 9. Let's take it from verse 8. All right, from verse 8 to 10. He says, he who sins, isn't he who sins, not he who sinned, past tense, but he who sins, present tense. Isn't that person living in sin? All right, so he says, he who sins is of the devil. Do they say he's of God? That scripture reading, we didn't write it. So he says, he who sins, present tense and future tense, he says, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned. See that? Sinned from the beginning. And what? He's still sinning. He has not stopped. So he says, those who bear that nature like Satan are his children. Watch this. He says, for this purpose, who? The Son of God was manifested. Means the word became flesh. He came and the Lord God declared, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. That one? Yes, he says, this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Sin. Come on. That's what he said. The devil has sinned from the beginning. Ah, he says, whoever has been born of God. What does he say? Does not sin. Why? For his seed. Whose seed? God's seed. Who is that seed? Jesus Christ. The sinless one. Remains in him. If Jesus remains in him. He cannot do it. That's the point he's making there. Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God ah come on now can Christ sin so if Christ dwelling in you you can sin with Christ dwelling in you not at all. He says once the seed remains, he cannot sin. He watch the thing. He says, in this the children of God, what he says, the children of God and who? The children of the devil are manifested, means they are revealed in this way. Whoever does not practice righteousness, is not of God. When you do not practice righteousness, what you're practicing? Sin. Come on. And he says, Oh, I, I practice sin, but I'm still of God. That's not what the word is saying. The word of God says, Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he what does not love his brother. You can't love your brother and practice sin. Because sin encourages others to sin. And if you know that the ways of sin is death, you will be encouraging your brothers who you love to do the same. Though you say you love them. That love is not going nowhere good. Why? Because it's leading to separation from the life of God in Christ, which is eternal life. And the Lord is saying you will perish without eternal life. Hello? Come on now. You got it? So he said then, this is how we know the children of God, different from the children of the devil. Those who don't practice righteousness, is not of God. Some will say, well, I practice righteousness, but I'm not telling no lies, not all the time. 
So you practice sin sometime and righteousness sometime. You're still a child of the devil. Because every person who practice sin still do something right once in a while. They never do everything wrong. But we're talking about being faithful to what is right. Ah, uh, let me show you that in Romans 6. Because some will say, no man, remember. God know we are sinners saved by grace. Huh? So let me show you what Paul talk about those who think said that is what grace is for. That's not what grace is for at all. Grace is not for you to say, God know we are sinners, so we go sin, so we forgive you a long time. Uh-uh. He said in Romans chapter 6, from verse 1 to 6, he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue? If you're not stopped, don't you continue? Talk to me. If you're not stop sin, don't you mean say you continue? Right, so it says, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Did Paul say yes? No, he says certainly not. How shall we? He's talking to the believers now, not the world. He says, how shall we who died to sin? What he said we did? We died to sin. So he said, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Uh, and then Paul asks a question to check if there's a point of ignorance why they are living like that. Maybe there's something they didn't know. That's why they're acting in a way against nature of how they should operate. He says, or do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ? Everybody was not baptized into Christ. But he says, as many of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus, he says, you were baptized into his death. Ah, uh, Come on now. And you're also what? Buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should what? Walk in what? No, he had to use the word should to them. Since many of them was not living it. And while they're still claiming they're in him. And that in him is not true when you are in sin. Because there is no sin in him. Come on now. So what did he say further? He says, for if we have been what? If we have been united together in the likeness of his death, that is speaking about the baptism, certainly we also be in the likeness of his resurrection, speaking about the new life. Now he's displaying, he says, this life, he will never die again. <laughs> Oh, come on. That's talking about eternal life. He says, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that what? What we need to know. He says, knowing this, what we need to know. Knowing that our old man, what is that old man? That old sinful man, that old sinful nature. He said, was crucified with him and when he raised he never raised up back with it for you he says that old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer no longer no means that it no continue that no means that it stop all right that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Come on, somebody. No longer means an end. Come on, give me more. 
I believe further down it tells us that we are slaves of God. No, sir. Slaves of God and of righteousness now that we have turned to God. So that's from verse 16 to 18. Romans 16 to 18. He says, do you not know? There's another thing he said you need to know. Many believers don't know that. That's why they keep falling to sin and keep on asking the Lord to forgive them. Because they don't know these things. Some were not taught as much as this as Paul was laying out in his letter to the church in Rome that they would know the gospel. That they would not take it for granted so they know and keep messing up and hope so maybe they make it and find out they didn't. So Paul as an apostle is writing this to correct any wrong theology, concept or belief or philosophy they have about what it really means to be born again. What it really means to be saved from sin. What it really means to be under grace versus being under the law. All these points Paul pointed out here. So he says, do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are what? You are that one's slave whom you obey. Whether of sin leading to death or what? What does obedience lead you to? Sin? <laughs> no, it leads you to righteousness. There it is. It is sin that leads you to death. But obedience, he says, leads you to righteousness. And he says, you must present yourselves as slaves of righteousness. Look what he says in verse 17 and 18. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, past tense, you were slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed, present tense. You obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which, were, which you were delivered. In other words, that teaching that you got took you out of that life, that bondage to sin. is the form of doctrine that takes you out. And every church don't have that form of doctrine. Some church have a condoning doctrine to sin. They don't condemn sin. They condone sin. And Jesus never condoned sin. He condemned it in the flesh that the righteousness of God will be revealed in us. Watch this. That's what scripture says. So it says, But thank be to God. What he says, But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. That's the obedience that leads to righteousness. You obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And have been what? And having been set free. Does he say you are set free? Having been set free from sin, what you became? You became slaves of righteousness. Or oh, you must be serving righteousness and sin. When you serve sin, you sin. That's what he's saying from verse 16, you know. Whom you present yourself slaves to obey. You see that one? Whom you present yourselves slaves to obey. He says, that one is your master. It's either of sin leading to death or obedience leading to what? Obedience does not lead to sin, it leads to righteousness. You see it? And it says then, since you obeyed from your heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, he says, having been set free from sin, that's what you became now. Slaves of righteousness. You see it? Come on. So you, you, you can't be a child of God and a slave of sin. It ain't working. That somebody who told you that fool you up. They probably wanted you to fill the church seat and get your money. But that's all they want. They're not there about your soul. 
Because your soul is more valuable than that. Hello. And whether you like it or not, whether you feel the seat or you don't feel the seat, whether you give or you don't give, I'm still telling you the truth. Come on now. Because at the end of the day, that's what the Lord wants me to do. And I'm doing what he tells me to do. Not just say it, but live it. Hello. And my life has been an example before you. No, no, you can't point me out nothing. Not one. You can dream of it, but then you can't say and see it. Uh -uh. Because there is the life of God in Christ is in me. Hello. It's no longer I. That's what Paul said. But it's who live. <laughs> and if Christ is living in me, Christ can sin. Okay. Hallelujah. I stopped trying a long time. I was trying for a long time, messing up, falling up, tripping up, saying sorry till I'm afraid to say sorry. I'm sorry till I'm sorry till I can't sorry no more. And I realize that I have a very sorry relationship with the Lord. And I need to break free from that. Because it was becoming less and less convincing to believe that I'm forgiven of something I keep going back to. And those who convince themselves it's all right, ah, fine for you. But I'll tell you, you're not in a good place to be practicing sin and thinking you're still good with God. Because he paid for sin past, sins present, and sins to come. So if we say it though, who need to repent? We just tell him, sorry Lord, and I accept your forgiveness for my sin today, my sin tomorrow, and my sin to come. And me live any hope because he already forgave me. But that ain't the gospel. Whoever taught you that taught you some perversion of the gospel and made you become a prey to the enemy's teeth those are earlings that are seeking after gain to gain the crowd because many people are not willing to give up on sin and because they're looking for the many then they themselves say we are all sinners them say we you know so if they are sinners why they come preaching against sin and then doing it? And they hypocrite to do so. A drunkard preaching against drunkenness. Come on now. The first thing you need to do is stop. And then you can live the life. Paul wrote about that in Romans 2. Regarding teachers who was teaching the law. But he says, though they're teaching the law, they're not obeying the law. They're not doing what the law states. But they go around telling people, remember the law. Hypocrites. Come on. Paul said to them in Romans 2. Look at Romans 2 if you don't see that, what Paul said. Paul said in Romans 2, reading from verse 1. He says, therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. Whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Why? For you who judge practice the same things. That's why they condemn themselves, you know. That's why the Lord told him not to judge because they were practicing the same thing. But he didn't tell his disciples to practice the same thing. He told his disciples to stop that practice. To live according to how he lives. Come on now. So everyone was not his disciples. But those who were disciples were taught well by proper doctrine how to live. Now so, he says, but we know what? That the judgment of God is according to what? To truth against who? Against everybody? No, against those who practice such things. And what did Paul say to them? Do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things 
and do the same. Come on. So you say you're preaching against sin, but you tell them, say you're still a sinner. You think, say, by telling them not to sin, and you're still sinning, they're going to escape the judgment. That's what Paul is saying. Do you think, oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and do the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Come on now. What did Paul say? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that what? What you must know. The goodness of God, what it should do. Lead you to repentance, lead you to turn from sin. It's not for you to continue sin and say, God so good in spirit, me feel another day, so me can't sin. No, he said, that's not what grace is for. The Lord spare your life for you to turn from sin. And if you turn from sin, you won't do it. So he says, in accordance, in what? But in accordance with the hardness, you see that? In accordance with the what? The hardness and your impenitent heart, you are what? Treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Huh? Who will render to each one what? According to his deed. Or meeting said and saying, I have nothing to do. No good thing that you have done. Stand there. He says, according to your deed, you're going to be judged. And some say, no, you don't have nothing to do what we do. It's just our faith. As long as you believe in Jesus, you're saved. Stay there. I think it's your belief you're going to be judged by. He says, according to their deeds. He says, eternal life to who? You see who getting eternal life? Eternal life to those who patiently continue in doing good. It's not just believing in things good. Doing it. Who oh, by patient continuance in doing good. Seek for what? Glory, honor, and immortality. I think they didn't say enough to seek no glory. Stay there. No seek none. Because we know say none of the for you in our sin. When you sin, you say you fall short of the glory. But when you turn from sin, you are being restored to the glory in God. And that's why it says, they seek glory, honor, and immortality to live forever. He says, but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but what do they obey? Unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Sin. What is awaiting them? Indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil. Every one of them, whether it's Jews or Gentile. Come on now. You're seeing that? To the Jews first and also to the Greek. God is no there is no partiality with God. Yeah, that's what he said in the next verse. For there is no partiality with God. God not saying because you preach so much and you have a nice church building and you serve on the board and on the committee of elders and they give you a ball plaque for much years of service in church. You're saved. If you practice sin, you're going to a devil's hell. Oh my God. Come on, somebody. I don't care what position they give you. I know how much applause and awards you get. The bottom line is you're practicing. There's a place reserved for you. And it's not with Christ. Hello? It's with the devil and his angels. Come on now. 
Those who abide in Christ do not sin. Hello. Hallelujah. Now the word of God says so. Oh, some don't know that. First John 3, verse 4 to 6. What does it say? First John 3, verse 4 to 6. Whoever commits sin, notice the commits, is continuous. Watch that. He says, he says, commits sin. Also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is what? Lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to do what? To cover up our sins so we get away. No, to take away our sins means say, no sin must be in your life. That's what he manifests in you to do. Remove, take away. It's not for you to have them. Take away. Take away our sins. And in him, and in him, there is no sin. So he says, whoever abides in him, what do they do? They sin and ask the Lord, forgive me. No, they say, whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever, has, whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Hello, somebody. Now, them the gospel, they don't get much hallelujah, church. Uh, no, but nobody not getting a spirit now. Uh -uh. Spirit get cool now. Uh -huh. Because they are meddling in sin. And one just say, because they feel the spirit, they are right. And the Lord say, uh-uh. Even the devil feel the spirit. Because when he's in the presence of Christ, in the ball out, holy one of God, and the bow down and the worship and say, I know who you are. In the feel the spirit, yes. Feeling, I feel him making a ball out. And they say, have you come to torment me for the time? Come on. In the feel his spirit. But he's a demon. And he's saying, he's legion. For we are many. Come on now. So, we're not about feeling. We are talking about the life. Are you living the life? Come on. And many are not living the life. And while you're trying to teach Christ not living the life, Satan is able to corrupt their doctrine. They are not able to get clear revelation of the scripture because they are still meddling in sin. Their understanding in the word is impaired because they are still meddling in sin. Those spirits that still get them to engage in sin is blocking their hearts from receiving certain depths of revelation from the word. And they don't think it has nothing to do with it. But it does. Because you can't be wrapping up with devils and demons. And it don't affect your ministry to others that you are doing in the spirit. Come on. Huh? If you are ministering polluted water to the people, won't it affect the people? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. When you handle sin and handle the word, won't it transfer some contamination in what is being released? And that's why Paul is saying, you must come out from amongst them. You must be separate. You must not touch the unclean thing. And the Lord said, I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters. Huh? But you're not son and daughters because you call yourself son and daughter of God. Is that not how this thing works? You need authority to do so. And God give you moral authority through the word and through the work of the Holy Spirit within you. But when you meddle in sin, you're not in the word. <laughs> Come on. 
I heard one preacher said last night, that's why we received the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. That's why we received the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. And I said, my God, you hear what they're saying? You know that scripture doesn't say you receive the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin? The, the scripture does say the Holy Spirit will come to convict the world of sin. It's not the believers of sin. But you have it wrong though. You get that doctrine. I understand what you think so. That's the doctrine you get. Say, you get the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin. The Holy Spirit is there to convict the world of sin. Children of God must not sin. Children of God is not the world. Come on. And they fail to understand that. That's in St. John 16. All right. St. John 16 from verse 8. Huh. He says, Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit. Says, when he has come, he who? The Holy Spirit. He will what? Convict the world. is convict Christian. Convict children of God. No. Convict the world. Is the world sinning. Not the child of God must be sinning. Those that call himself child of God that sinning are liars. He says he will convict the world of sin. And what? And of righteousness and of judgment. Why convict the world of sin now? Because they do not believe in Jesus. That's why he convict them of sin. If they believe in Jesus, that he come to take sin away, you think they'd still be in sin? They would have out of sin a long time. They're still in it because they don't believe in Jesus, that he come to take their sin away. They still got sin. They don't believe in him. So he says, he convict them of sin because they do not believe in him, Jesus. And he convict them of righteousness because what? I go to my father and you see me no more. They will not see me anymore. Who was doing all those great miracles before them? Because he's gone. While he was there that they should take advantage of him being present with them there. They were ridiculing and cursing and complaining, criticizing and finding fault. Till they put him on the cross. Come on now. So he said, have righteousness because I go to my father and you will see me no more. Have judgment. Why? Judgment because the one you say that make you sinning has already been judged and cast down. That's the devil. There it is. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is not the ruler of the church. The ruler of this world is judged. Hello. I'm talking to you. That's why John was saying in 1 John 3 verse 1 to 3. Behold what man of love the father has what? Bestowed upon us. Us who? That's the people of the church. The body of Christ. It's not the world he's talking about. He called children of God. Look at it good. He says, Be all what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what? Children of God. Therefore what? The world does not know us. The us there is not the world. Look at it good. The world does not know us because it did not know him. And they still don't know him. So he says, beloved, now, when are we? Now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed what I am, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is in his full form and glory. And he says, and everyone who has this hope in him, what do they do? Purifies himself how? Just as he 
is pure. Oh, you like that? That sound like a mix up and blender. Not at all. That's purity. Sanctification. Holiness. Righteousness. Not the righteousness of men, the righteousness of God. And he says that's what he must become in him. Hallelujah. Come on. But they don't believe the gospel is sound too good to be true. They said, no, you can't live in a, a sinful world. You are not sin. You have to sin. Because they don't believe in the power of the life of Christ being in them. That they can say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Who is in the world? Satan. Come on. And then talk about, no. I watch a movie the other day, what they call it, the Good Samaritan. Or the Samaritan. I think a Sylvester Stallone show it, star it. And he's there telling the boy, good and evil lies in everybody. He must learn this lesson. Good and evil lies in everybody. But you choose, to, you choose which one to follow. I thank God say I learned the word. Because if we never learn the word, we would say yes like a little boy. Yes, that's true. Good and evil lies in me. Devil in me and God in me too. Then share two different compartments. And we decide which room we go to. No, the Lord said he is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. So it says, anyone who says they have fellowship with him and walk in darkness is a liar and a hypocrite. Means that they are lying and pretending like they're doing it right when they are not. Hello. Because you can't have fellowship with God and be in sin. Watch this. 1 John 1 verse 5 to 7 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that what? God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, what we do? We lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as who? As he is in the light. We have fellowship. That's where the fellowship comes. Because you can't have true fellowship being light with those who are in darkness. That's what he's telling you. you know. He says, that's where we have, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ. His son does what? Cleanses us from some, from most, from all sin. Then if he cleanses us from all, any left? Come on. Then if none left, you, can't, you, know, you must can't say, you don't know, have none. Lord of mercy. Come on. If they don't believe the gospel, they only talk about it and act like they're in it. But it's those who obey the gospel that are truly saved. Hello? It's not those who just say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. It's those who obey. Those who what? Praise God. And obedience is what? Better than sacrifice, no matter what you give or what you don't give. If you are not obedient to the Lord, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to get cut off. Come on. Because God is calling each and every one of us to obedience. And he said it's obedience that leads to what? Righteousness. Hallelujah. It's sin that leads to death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, stand with me. We're going to pray. Time to release you. Our time is up. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Lift those hands to Jesus. Kurama Moshamasa.
whatever is hindering us from meeting the standard that God has called us to it's not merely just that we're in the world and we have human flesh and there's a devil or that we are a sinful nature because God is bigger than all of that so he said if you trust in him and obey him you would overcome them all You will overcome them all. But if you don't trust and obey him, you are an adulterer. It means that you idolize those things. You esteem those things higher and greater than God. And you are falling up prey to them. Because you don't truly believe in the power of God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Time to believe again. Time to turn and let the Lord have his way. Come on, somebody. Let him create a new heart in you today. And the transformation will begin as you walk by faith. You are allowing him to give the directions. And you're submitting to his lead in your life. Come on, somebody. And he will never lead you to sin. He will always lead you to righteousness. Grace and favor with the Father. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Consume me, Lord. Make me more like thee. Break me, and man the broken pieces of my life. I want to be used, <laughs> Lord, by you. Come on, say, consume. Come on, with the fire of your spirit. Consume me, Lord. Make me more like thee. Hey. Break me. And man, the broken pieces of my life. I want to be used. Hey, Lord, by you. Come on, say with all the heart. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Consume me, Lord. Make me more like thee. Oh, pray me and then the broken pieces of my life. Hallelujah. I want to be you. Yes. Come on, lift those hands of Jesus. Let it be a part from your heart and say, Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Please consume me Lord and make me more like uh, break me and mend the broken pieces of my life I want to be used yeah oh. consume me Lord with the fire of your spirit consume me lord and make me more like thee break me and mend the broken pieces of my life oh thank you lord everything lord into your hands jesus 
Come on, one more time. Consume me, love, with the fire of your spirit. Consume. Yes, God. Oh, yeah. Break me, Jesus. Burn the broken pieces of my life. I want to be used, Lord, by you. Come on, give him praise and glory. You heard the word. You heard the Holy Spirit ministering to you. He releases grace to those who humble themselves, who submit to his authority, who submit to the word that God wants to bring you in that life a life of God in Christ is eternal life and you don't have to wait till you die to receive it that would be too late but he says those who have the son have that life those who have not the son have not that life because there's a witness within them that testifies that truly there is a great change. Something new has begun inside that is bigger than them. And it's the seed of God that is remaining in them to keep them from sin and to keep them in holy union, fellowship and communion with the Father through His Word and His Holy Spirit. Right now we commit to you in the hands of the Lord. And pray that the word will not fall on deaf ears. It's not just be some information you heard. But it will open up a new channel. <laughs> a new dawning of life within you. The life of God in Christ. It's not religion. It's the spirit of God. Christ and his kingdom manifesting in you. The will and purpose of God. For you to be ears with him. Hallelujah. Ears of God. Join ears with Christ. And to reign with him in his kingdom. Come on somebody give him the praise. You are glad for that. Come on thank him in the house for the word. Thank him for his Holy Spirit. He will do the work. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy with Jesus. And to trust and obey. Praise God. Time to release you. We've already gone. Ah, praise God. 15 minutes over our time. You got to release you now. Praise God. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart. Praise God. And uh, you're going to give the final word to those who are watching online. Praise God. Those who are watching online, you're watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We have 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan, declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. You wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the word of God is clear on it. We don't have to add or take away. It's very plain for those who want to receive it. Those who want to argue it out and Wrestle with scriptures, as Paul, as Peter said, they wrestle with scriptures to their own damnation. Hallelujah. But we know that the word of God is true. And if you humbly submit to the word, the life of the word will be unveiled in you. And that life is eternal life. And it's the life of the kingdom. Eternal life. Hallelujah. And we're declaring it to you because we want you to know. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we encourage you to walk and embrace the life that God has given you in Christ Jesus. And abide in him and let his word abide in you. As otherwise you cannot produce that life. As he said, without me you, can, you cannot do nothing. Hallelujah. You cannot bear fruit except you abide in me and my word abide in you. That's what Jesus said. In John 15, verse 1 to 8. Praise God. So you want to get the word we declared is the gospel of the kingdom. We released this book on Amazon. 
Now you can go on Amazon.com and search in the search box, type in Richard B. Fagan. The book will come up. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom, subtitled The Gospel That Jesus Preached. And we are keen to ensure that what we preach is what Jesus preached. Because that's what John preached. That's what Paul preached. That's what Peter preached. That's what James preached. All line upon line of the word that the Lord declared to them, that they declared to us. And that's what still should be preached today in spite of the times you are living in. The times should not determine the truthfulness of the word. The word is truth no matter what the time or the season. The word of God is always truth. His truth endureth to all generations. Praise God. So he wanted to know the truth and he said he know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Praise God. So we encourage you be strong in the Lord. The power of his might. You can order the book online to Amazon.com or download it to Kindle to your devices to read it at what is convenient to you. Or you can also get more of the teachings by sending a friend's request to Richard V. Fagan on Facebook. He'll be plugged into our five live stream services that are streamed every week on Facebook. Five services streamed. And we have four other services that are not streamed that are in the house also that are put in what we call our daily devotional. It's an ebook. You can order it from us. That's just our free gift to you. Hallelujah. That won't cost you. All you need to just, just request it by the number on the screen. And of course, we'll send it to you by WhatsApp. And you can have it to read on your device with or without internet. Once you download it, it's there. And it's very, very small and compact as an ebook. So you can have it to read on your device whenever convenient. And it's day-to-day -day teaching in the Word from September till from January to September, yes, up to this month. Praise God. And this month is already out. And our word is already here for every day of this month. Because we are preaching and teaching ahead of the days. Praise God. That are coming. That when we record them and put them together. We are still going at, in advance of what is being released. Praise God. So we hope that you really take advantage of that. And build your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. For that those who hear you and see the life you live will also share in a full and free salvation. That's our aim and our purpose. The word has not changed. The gospel has not changed to suit the world or to get the word. The world needs to humble himself and submit to the word of God. Hallelujah. And we're not forcing them to do so. Just as we came willingly, they must choose to do the same. Praise God. And we know that's the word of God. And that's what God has taught us. And that's how we're living. And we're not going to change how we live to suit the world. That's how the Lord told us to live, and we're living before them. As he says, we let our light shine before them, that they will see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. That's the truth. And so we wanted to get into the word. Amen. If you want to know more about our church, check out our church's website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Of course, you go on that site, you will see more about our ministry. Those who have been blessed by the ministry can sow to the ministry through the website. All the options are there on the front page. And of any person designed to hook up with us based on our vision, our missionary, our long-term dreams, hallelujah, and visions, we can connect together and get them done. We believe together we can accomplish more that we can apart. So if you connect with us, we believe more will be get done. And the more that persons connect with us, the more places we'll be able to reach and to do more in advancing the case, the word of the kingdom in our, to, amongst all people. Amen. Praise God. That's what we're here for. So keep praying for us and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Any further questions, you can call me, Richard Figan, at 876-839-9390, 2427 All the information is still on the screen until next time. God bless you real good. Praise God. You blessed today. Blessing, blessing, blessing to have you here and to share the word with you. Go in peace and remain steadfast in the Lord and watch what God will do. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord open his countenance upon you and give you his peace. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. Bless you all. Praise God.